Good evening, Hazel. And yes, there's certainly one man who wants to up his game somewhat, and that is Mark Williams. He trails by five frames to three, but in all honesty, he hasn't played well enough, really. You would think to get three frames, and yet it could quite easily have been four apiece. So what will unfold this evening is anyone's guess. Stephen Hendry to break. Yes, and Mark Williams' highest break in this afternoon session was 24, if you can believe that. And at one point he was three all with Stephen, and you could see Stephen in this year thinking, how am I three each? And Mark's highest break is only 24. I've just seen him in the players' lounge, by the way. Talk about relaxed, John. Mark Williams was knocking balls in all over the place, and he said to me, if I beat 24, I'm going to wave at the commentary box. breaks 69 I mean usually eight frames you usually see a century from Stephen I don't know how he's playing but just 24 for Mark Williams and the pot success well we usually say 90% or above is what's required in the modern game but both these players way short of that and that long pot attempt there from Mark Williams not very close and there you see just 37 percent of them just over one out of two for Stephen, which isn't bad i don't expect 90 percent on long pot success Balls certainly run very awkward in a lot of frames this afternoon, but that was pretty, probably because the players made a few mistakes and there was a few misses going on, and pink and black were tied up and blue was on the side cushion and became very scrappy. Hopefully these two players will have the balls in open play this evening. Catching a ball colour is never advisable. But so far, the potty machine, there is Mark Williams, has not really come to the table. There's a tester. And that's a bit more like it. Well, that'll build his confidence. Ideally, the first thing Mark would like to do is get the other side of this blue and play a cannon into the pink at the apex of the pack and hopefully bring balls out into play. Four. He can't do that yet. So not a great chance, this. Four. Well, it proves once again, once you start using side, then any pot can be missed. And that was the reason he's putting a lot of right-hand side on the cue ball and didn't allow for the throw of it. Can't believe it, can he? One. 
But as you suggested before, John, the, the, either player will be looking to try and get the cannon on the pink and bring the pink and black into play. I don't know whether Stephen's got that angle on the blue. I don't think he has. He's got an angle, but I think playing it with pace, it'll just throw him wide of the pink. This is red nearest the top cushion will go. Six. Yeah, Stephen, I'd love to play that one through the gap. That would be the red to get in position up for the blue. Looks a little bit tight. If you can pot this with a little bit of left hand side. Maybe bend the cue ball, force the red in. He'd get up for the blue. Left hand side would be natural to take him up the table, but it's got to be very tight because he's had a couple of looks at it already. Stephen Hendry, six. Well, would you believe that? And once again, it was using side. He tried to play it with left hand side, and on these super fine cloths, the side left hand immediately pushes to the right. What? And when you consider there was another red that was potable, he'd be very disappointed with that. Here we go then. Oh, he's hit the pink half ball. Okay, he's knocked in the pink itself into a more potable position, so that's something out of it, but ideally he'd like the pack to have been open there. Seven. Now, Mark, can you beat 24? It suits one blue, one pink. <laughs> Hopes are high for him to bring the, beat that 24 break. Suits mark that the pink spot is not available. The highest available is the black spot. 14. I don't know whether that. I'm just looking when he played that red. <coughs> the bottom red will go. If he, if it does, then he doesn't have to play the cannon. If it doesn't. Then he's got a choice, either play the cannon. I don't think that goes, you know. I think it's just touching the other red and doesn't pot. Hence the reason for playing the cannon, but he's got nothing. 20. So he won't be better in that 24 break at this visit. Proved me wrong, I didn't realise he could pop that. No, oh, good shot. So that <laughs> equals the highest break he's made in the match, and we're gonna get it better now because he's got a nice straightforward red, just a stun run through for the pink. 25. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said he waved to you, John, and that's uh, that's exactly what he's done. 
How laid back is that? There he is playing the last 16 of the UK and he's kept his promise. He's a remarkable character, he really is. And it's one of his great strengths, isn't it? His temperament. What was it they used to say? We're all around is losing the heads and you can keep yours. And he can certainly do that. Well, that was a terrific shot. And he's got a nice angle on this pink to play the cannon into those four reds. And if these break nice, could be a quick finish to this frame. Hmm, interesting the way he played that. I thought he'd have been playing the red on the right-hand side there because the black was going to be a stopper ball, but has he got a gap? Well, he has, he's found it. 39. And this is much better already from Mark Williams. A lot more like he's been showing upstairs on the practice table and indeed in his first round match where he beat Mark Davis 9-3. I think his concern here is the fact that if he pots the pink and it gets re-spotted, it might just tie up those two reds to the left of the black. See where the pink goes. Colin Humphreys, our referee. Four five. It. Yeah. Yes, it more or less has tied those two reds up. Well, and maybe because those two reds were tied up, he just took his eye off the ball, literally. I think it was the old problem with side again, John, to be honest with you. It had a little bit of left on that, trying to check it off the top cushion. And it's pushed across the table. He ended up missing it. Whoa. And it turned out that that red was just about available from where the cue ball finished. That's probably the only place the cue ball could have finished for that red to be available. So, Stephen, I mean, almost impossible to envisage in winning the frame at this visit, but he can get right back in it. Eight. Now, if he's got the angle here to flick the top red out here, he can land on the other one. So he could bring one into play and leave himself on the other red. Like that. So, do the reds in play, and this is not an easy shot. But the advantage is he can lean over and play this. He doesn't have to play it with the rest. So one good pot required, and these aren't easy. Well played. 17.
세지. 스티븐 헨드리 30. Well, he knew that was the big red and if he potted that, there was every chance that he could finish this frame but he's missed it and what's worse, he's left it. Well, yes, John, I bet you wish he'd have that second last red again as he played a terrible positional shot there to leave himself not on a ball colour and tight near the side cushion going away from the, the last red it was a very poor shot. Three. Five. Just the green and brown needed to narrow the gap to one frame. Eight. A bit more like it, this from Mark Williams. OK, he didn't uh, win the frame in one visit, but he potted a good long red, which is twelve the main strength of his game. So knocking a red in like that will have done his confidence no harm for the battle ahead. Seventy. Twenty-three. Thirty in the frame. So oh, twice, twice he's saying he beat his high break at twenty-four in that frame. Stephen Henry though did have a squeak, but he didn't take it. And Mark Williams looking a little bit happier now. Just trails by the one frame, five-four. Stephen, as you say, he played a poor positional shot on the second last red. I mean, if he'd have got good on the colour, that last red that he attempted, he could have made it a lot easier than that. Yeah, there was plenty of pressure on that long red. And he knew the significance of it, but this shot here is very poor. There's plenty of things you can do with that. And the one he's played... 25. ..is the last of the options, leaving yourself there. That really was a very poor shot. Of course, more pressure on the long red. Jawed it, left it for Mark Williams. And instead of being three clear, he's only one. Yes, I think, uh, well, he beat Jimmy White in the last round, 9-8. He may be in for a long haul again this evening because uh, the, the way both players are playing, I can't see someone just running away with it at the moment. No, but you've, he, he's got to be looking at it and thinking Mark Williams is certainly going to play, play better than he did this afternoon. He knows that's going to happen. And probably Stephen's going to have to play a little better as well than he played this afternoon. So, Frame 10. All in the balance at the minute. Mark Williams to break. But Mark Williams will definitely improve this evening from this afternoon's performance. Always been behind in this match, Mark Williams lost the first frame, levelled at one each, then went 2-1 behind, 3-1 behind, then he levelled at three each, and always been that odd frame behind since, or two frames behind at the start of this session, of course. You have to be careful with this. 
don't want to promote any reds towards the corner pocket so he's played it quite well when I say that cue ball's very short so he kept the reds away but he's give Stephen a look at this on the right hand side <coughs> saving grace for Mark of course is it's pretty difficult to get on that black just looking to see there Stephen if he can pot this red and stun and go th and go through about six to eight inches and leave the black through the gap this is going to have to be hit really well if he's going to do that so he decided to play the screw back and try and get on the pink but no good may have got away with it well we're right behind the pocket that doesn't go does it I know he's a good potter but well there's not all the pocket to go at no that doesn't go for me he agrees wise choice and Mark's just got a, a foothold back in this match he doesn't want to make a mistake and stick Stephen straight back in the balls and make it easy for him so showing a bit of patience there very well played but unfortunately this frame already looks like it's following the pattern of some this afternoon pinks on the side cushion safe black at the moment is tied up with that red very close to it so it could be tactical for a while this foul for miss Mark Williams, four. well played Tap on the table appreciation from Mark Williams and quite rightly so a great reply really well played that's as good as a safety shot as he's played in this match Mark Williams
one. Well, that's a good way of getting yourself out of trouble. Excellent pot. Stephen Hendry, one. Yes, not much else he could do. Couldn't really flick off the black because he'd be leaving the red close to it for the corner, so a little tactical at the minute. Foul, the miss. Stephen Hendry, seven. Necessarily giving away some points, and oh, he's hit it this time. I think. I think Stephen would have liked to have heard the referee shout "touching ball," but he didn't, so it mustn't be touching. Touching ball. It'd have been nice if he could have just got the cue ball back up to the ball end. Got to be careful with this one. He doesn't flick the pink. He's playing it this way. Well, he decided he was going to play the pink full ball quite hard, and that's a clever little shot, actually. Yeah, using his, uh, his experience for a change. That's the one thing about Stephen, you know, you think when players have been in the game a long time, they can delve into the experience, but he doesn't normally do that, does he? He just plays exactly the same way as he's always played. See a pot, try to knock it in and win the frame. That's another fabulous safety from Mark Williams. And at the moment, he's in the driving seat in that department. He's certainly given Stephen a few headaches when he comes to the table. He's got to catch this one just right. And the thing is, to get this back to ball, you've got to hit it a little bit thicker. To avoid the cannon on the other reds. And he's made a pretty good fist of this as long as he misses the yellow. And he just caught it. So he's left a chance of a pot. A couple of reds will go to this left corner. Problem is, the potting angle is just taking him into other reds. So the dangerous shots to take on, but the safety shot doesn't look any easier to me, John. No, ideally the reds he'd like to play off. The two very close together above the black spot. He could play off them a little thick, but of course he's slightly hampered by the yellow with his queuing, so... Yeah, decisions to make here. Don't know about you, John. I never really fancied knocking reds in in corners when it, I didn't know there was a path back. You sort of trust into luck, really. Yeah, it's uh, a tough shot with little reward. Anyway, he's taking it on. And knocked it in nicely. He always knew the pink was adjacent oh. to a corner pocket. And... That's all he's left with. Now he's just got to avoid a kiss on green or brown here. Couldn't have played that much better. Well, I say that. Let's see where the pink goes when it's respotted. Yeah, it looks for all the world like the black spot. Middle likes it on its own spot, wouldn't he? Seven. Mind you, if he drops this in, plays on the black, it'll just be a swap round. Eight. Black will go on the pink spot, so it'll be all right. Couldn't really play that any softer, and of course, because the cue ball's come off a little bit further, he's now relatively straight on this. Now a little bit of an angle. Oh, he didn't want that flick on the other red. 16. Now, ideally, he'd like to have missed that, but you can still get the black. And he's queuing so much better this evening, Mark Williams. This is much more 23. like his old self. Made his mind up with that opening red. 
that he was going out full-blooded for it. And consequently, he's deserving everything he's getting at the moment. Twenty-four. Short of pace, though. That's why he's got this blue. He missed one in the uh, the first frame this evening. Trying to play it with a bit of side, he missed the blue. And this one's a little bit more difficult to see where the next red comes from. He needs a good line and a good length on this. Well, it wasn't a bad line, but that cue ball needed to bounce another six inches for it to be good on this red. In fact, I think it's that bad. I think we'll see him playing safe. This is a very risky pot to take on. Oh, he's going for it. And he got it. Well, he found a gap. I don't think he'd have played it if there wasn't a gap to get back to the balk end. Mark Williams, 30. So, just a 30 break, but a very useful one. And that's not how Stephen intended to play it. it was certainly too wide. He wanted to hit the red on the other side, so he didn't leave this. I mean, these are not easy by a long stretch, but... And certainly not at that pace. This always surprises me. A lot of people say, well, those pockets, are they bigger than the club tables? <laughs> but as you can see, uh, they sometimes look easy when they dropped in at dead weight. But at that pace, as you say, John, I mean, it's almost impossible. But I suppose Mark thought, well, it's the only way I can get on a colour. Stephen's looking at this red. He's trying to find a gap as well as pot it. Well, he found the gap, but he missed the red. Yes, I think that's why he did miss it, John. You were absolutely right. He was so conscious of trying to get the cue ball back down the table. He virtually forgot the potting angle. I think if he had potted that red, he was going to cannon into something. Well, that was a terrific pot, and he's not bad on this black. I mean, a lot will depend on how the red split when he pots the black, but if they open up nicely, this is a good chance. I think these are perfect, John. I think if he pots this black and screws into the top red, that'll move the bottom one. Well, he's looking like he's playing a run through there, but they're certainly going to open. I must confess, I'm Rock surprised Williams. he played what? it that way. I honestly thought a little screw shot there. And the two reds on the right would have moved and he'd have been on the other one. But what I didn't factor in was him missing the black. One. Thinner on the blue than he would have liked. I don't know whether he can 
get into this and screw round off two cushions for one of those reds just above and to the left of the pink for the right corner. Well, he could do, but he's under hit that. There was another example. We've seen it a lot this week, haven't we? We saw it 14. a lot in his match with Jimmy White, just not getting through the ball at all. Whether it's because the tables are so quick and they're, they're half quitting on the shots, I don't know, but not one of Stephen's best, that. You can still pot this. He just about struggled in, so he's recovered the situation. He looks to be OK on the green. Once again, John, another example of him not having the cue ball under perfect control there. Slightly overscrewed that, would like to have been wider. He can pot this red, of course, but it's a little trickier and a little thinner than he would have liked. And his position is also a bit trickier. And we see it time and time again, if you don't have that cue ball under control, it just keeps accruing. Position and shots get tougher and tougher and tougher, and in the end, you miss. Well, that was a lot better what? pot than it looked, hampered as he was by the brown. It wouldn't have even been the ready to play it could he got to the middle of the cue ball. He played the one to the right corner, but that was a tremendous pot. It's going to be a big ask to win the frame at this visit, particularly with those two reds almost touching one another near the top cushion. And this cue ball needs to run a little bit. And he just about drifted past the black. And it'd be handy to have the black on its spot here. Because to win the frame at this visit, Four. he needs to disturb those two reds. And if the black's on its spot, much more chance of doing that. But he's just a bit short of pace. Yes, another example of a poor positional shot, I'm afraid. And a big margin for error there. If you play that little firmer, you can be up for the blue if you're not on the black, but one thing you don't want to be is low. And you can see, having to take the cue ball away, and this is a far trickier shot than it looks. Well, Colin, put it back on the black spot. That's a good idea. 11. He's forgotten there. And there you go. Mark Williams. Another example 11. of losing position. Yes, he was a little bit fortunate there. If he'd have just kissed the pink or the green, he'd have left his red on for Stephen. But the green's come to his rescue, having that found that gap. Stephen trying to swerve, but he's not right over the corner. He's got to wait this just right to put. Oh, well, that's nowhere near. Foul. Mark Williams. Didn't Foul. get the swerve at all. Gone in off. Left the red. As the cue ball will be put anywhere in the D. Just hit it too hard. Didn't allow for the time for the swerve to take effect. But there's still the problem of these two reds. Near the top cushion. 24 ahead. And that's not the best shot. One. In fact, it couldn't be much worse, so he won't be winning the frame at this visit. Now, John, would you be putting the ball colour safe somewhere here? Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? 25 point lead. Well, he's putting the pink safe. Mark yeah, Williams. and I also what? think good idea as well. You know, Stephen's right handed, so he'd have to pot that pink with the rest over there. So, always a consideration when you play that shot. Yeah, and I don't think it's a bad idea making Stephen hit this rather than play the snooker because he'll knock one over the corner if he doesn't catch it right. And that's exactly what's happened. 
Now, will the brown come to his rescue? It doesn't. Mark Williams needs both these reds, one with a colour. One. Good pot. And he's getting down pretty quick, so he must be... Well, just about perfect on the black to force it for this red. And it's only the red he needs, so no heroics here. Eight. Nine. And it looks as though the comeback is complete. Started this evening, two frames behind. But for snookers, it'll level the match. Given this plenty of thought, I think he wants to play the snooker. He's 34 points in front, he's only 27 remaining. And Mark Williams, nine, and the frame. And Stephen Hendry doesn't even bother to come back to attempt those couple of snookers that were needed. So Mark Williams, a little bit better so far this evening, as you predicted, John. And he's now level. Five all. It just seems to be one of those matches that's just drifting along, isn't it? Opportunities for both players, but then, as we always find in a game of snooker, that if no one gets in and gets a decent break early on, the balls can go very awkward, and that's what seems to be happening. It certainly happened this afternoon. Some of the frames were really difficult in one of them. I think they had the, the black and blue tight on the top cushion with about six reds round it. And you could see from looking at that, it was going to take quite a while. And uh, it was more than one game this afternoon that was like that. Very tricky. And if you say you miss a few balls and they start going safe and both players get each other at it and next minute you've got a frame going to take an hour. So it was bound to be better this evening. And I feel Stephen Hendry needs to win a frame fairly quickly just so he can settle down this evening. He's not looking the most comfortable in his chair. And he knows that Mark's playing much better than he did this afternoon. So he needs a good chance. Yeah, and I think the key that seems to be apparent in the first two frames is a safety play. You remarked upon it. Mark Williams has been playing some excellent safety play, putting Stephen on the balk cushion, which makes it very difficult even for a, a player of Stephen's ability. So... It seems to be the tactical side that might just swing this in the Welshman's favour. Played it, it was lucky really not to leave the red. It doesn't look as though he's left anything that might tempt Mark, and he can be tempted. Well, maybe he is. He's going for this in the far left corner. Not close. I don't know whether he can have that one over the middle. It's exceptionally fine. Surely he wouldn't have played that shot. Stephen's coming to have a look now, but if Mark Williams has left that on, it's a very poor shot he's played. Mm, it's almost a back cut, really. Isn't it? I can't see how Stephen can hit that thin enough. He may prove me wrong. He 
Oh. I like an eagle, but this is thin. Well, he did get it. Great shot. Deserves everything he gets now. One. That was a tremendous pot. I mean, you could say it's careless that Mark Williams left him the opportunity, but it looks too thin to me. Look, way for thin. Stephen Hendry, one. He's feeling it at the moment. He really is. He hasn't settled down at all. And to miss that, well, it's unforgivable for somebody of Stephen's talent. And particularly the state of affairs one. in the match at the moment. He's seen his 5-3 lead go to 5-all, and he needs to stamp his authority on this match. That's not the way to do it. Yes, yeah, so at the start this evening, a lot of people could, as we look at the balls potted, oh. Mark Williams had just crept ahead. But you look at it and you think, well, Stephen was 5-3 in front, he'd be pleased with that, but Six. it's your performance, really, that determines how pleased you are. If you were 5-3 in front playing well, then you'd, you'd just kick on to the line, but 5-3 in front and thinking, well, I've not really played well and I don't feel that comfortable. Anyway, the lead's gone. There's a little interesting shot coming up. Pop this red. 11. Uh, I was thinking he could have reached there with him being left-handed, but he can't, so this is a big shot with the rest coming up here. Pop this and screw out, hopefully leave yourself on the pink in the centre, or the blue. 12. Yeah. Or indeed the green, if you can see it. Well played. Good strike, that was. I think he's just looking to see if that red to the left of the pink will pass the green. Otherwise, I'm certain he'd play the blue here. But I don't know where that red passes the green. Well, it doesn't, and that's why he's playing the green, just to clear the path, but can he get enough of the green? I think it's one of those he's got to swerve, John, and we've seen already this evening that when you start putting side on, it's very difficult on these thin cloths, so he's ignoring the green after all and that's all he could do he was so straight on the blue and the only red he could play for was the one on the left hand side of the table 17 now this calls for good queuing Still not 17. quite there, is he, with his long Mark game? Williams. Very surprising. Yes, yeah, nowhere near by Mark's standards, but I don't know whether he's got away with that. Whether Stephen can have this red past the brown or it's a safety. Yep, yeah, all he could do was play safe, so Mark's. Having a little run of the balls as well at the minute, when he's missing. Another great safety from Mark Williams, that. <laughs> Hit that any thicker, he was going to knock a red over the corner. Well, there's no problem Stephen hitting this, but this is one you've got to get right because he's going to move a few reds here. And that was a good shot. A little tap on the table there from, from Mark. 
The problem is with any safety shot that's played because the yellows are on its spot, the greens at this end of the table, there's only the brown that's going to give you any cover. So, unless you get a good length with the cue ball, you haven't really got a good safety. Very good shot again from Stephen. And the only red Mark can see is the one on the left hand side. And is he going to be forced into playing this? Yeah, well, I think that right smile, John, says it all, doesn't it? I, I think he's forced into going for it, but I don't think he fancies it. I think there's a way of playing it as well, John. I think if he rolls this through slower and he misses it, he might get away with it. Leaving the cue ball near the top isn't a bad idea. Like that. It should be safe. But it's amazing, isn't it? One of the greatest potters the, the game has ever seen, and he doesn't fancy those shots. Now, I'm just wondering, this red will, just below the pink, will go to the right middle. And normally, we've seen throughout Stephen's career, he believes that the best form of defence is attack. Yes, I don't think he can... Avoid the cannon on the red to the left, so this is all-out attack. It's there. Go on. Tight to the blue, but I think he's on the green. Yes, as you can see, comfortably get through to the green. Full stretch. But he couldn't have played it much better. He's just the pace of the cue ball perfectly. Now it's a case of what he can make. And you always feel with Stephen, if he can get in and make a big Four. break, that will settle him down. That's where he's at his happiest. Making sizable contributions. Oh, he certainly deserves what he gets after that opening red in the centre, which was far from easy. But he went for it full-bloodedly. And just to settle down this evening, if he can make a nice 50 or more, he'll feel like he's back involved in the match. Eleven. Once he potted that red, of course, he's now enabled the two reds to the right of the pink there, just below. They'll both go in the opposite left-hand pocket. So already when he's making this break, Stephen, he's making sure that he's getting extra paths for 18. the pink to pot, and for the reds to pot. And it's no wonder he's made over 740 centuries, because when he makes a break... He never seems to play 19. the wrong shot in it. Absolutely no need to be even thinking 25. about the black on these tables. Leave that exactly where it is. 26. For the time being, there's... Well, at least three or four reds here after this that he can get without having to move the black at all. Thirty-two. Thirty-three.
Forty. Just run through here. Two reds to the left of the black, the top one. And the one he'd be playing on. All the time trying to leave himself an angle to get back up for pink. Okay. If he Forty has six. to play on the black, fair enough, but All depends on the angle he's got now. Yeah, just looking at it, 30 points the lead. So two reds, two pinks would leave Mark Williams needing a snooker. Two reds, two pinks. 47. Well, it's going to be a bit more difficult now. He's not on this pink. Never mind the next one. Yes, John. You can see the cue ball check up off the cushion there. He didn't hit that particularly well. He flicked a bit aside on that one. And he's missed that by a furlong. Stephen Hendry, 47. But it wasn't that shot, it was the one before. Stephen's got a 31-point lead as it stands, but he'll know as well as anybody that there's nothing there on the table that Mark Williams can't pot, so he has to be very careful here. That's a good shot. Stephen's got a little chance here. If he can clip off this red and get the cue ball back up behind the yellow, he's got a chance at least a mark snookered here. Or if not, certainly in a bit of bother. <laughs> well, he can just sneak past the yellow. Well... Missing the red completely. Well, miss. well, and if he doesn't Stephen touch the Hendry blue, five. it could have cost him the frame. Well, Stephen's shaking his head, and I don't blame him because that kiss off the pink, off the green, I should say, has put the cue ball in a horrible spot. Snookered behind the blue for the red on the right-hand side. And the yellow's covering the red that's furthest up the table on the left-hand side, so he may have to just play off a cushion here and hit this from behind. Foul, miss. Mark Williams, four. And then, funnily enough, it's Stephen's turn to be lucky and hit the green. Because yeah. that cue ball was coming right back down the table. Is that okay, Steve? Okay. 
Yeah. Well, he'll settle for that. And the clip on the brown that time came to his rescue. Because the cue ball has been back down again. So, although he was initially unlucky, Stephen, touch on the brown wasn't too bad. That was a very well played shot. Using quite a bit of sign and. Good weight with the cue ball. Now that's all right, but does he leave the red to the left middle? He does, but I suppose the saving grace for Stephen is he's got a good length with the cue ball, so the red to the left middle wouldn't be easy. In fact, he's not even attempting it. One. Well, I didn't realise that one would pass the black. It didn't look as though it did, but nice pot. Ooh, it only just went by, didn't it? That was an excellent shot that Marks played there. Oh, he's going to be unlucky here. He's snooking Five. himself on both the reds. Of all the places in all the world, they had to finish up there. Yes, yeah, so I would suggest the red that's nearest to the pink is the one to play on here. Just go off the side cushion and try and drop on that dead weight. Not much else you can do, really. Well, he's playing it this way, but. You can leave this red up. You can't leave it up going the other way, I don't think. Yeah, the only problem is, John, as we well know with the miss rule as it is, I mean, you could miss a ball and all of a sudden Lock be out of frame, five. but it's turned out very well. Couldn't have hoped for anything better than that. I've got to be honest with you, John, I didn't realise it was going to play it that way. <laughs> it's the modern game. Well, this red is very close to going in. But now that it hasn't, it's over the pocket. It's a thinnish one, but you'd expect Mark Williams to pot this. One. The problem is when they're that thin, you can't really control the cue ball. Now you think, well, why not pot the ping and try and make a path for the the red, but if he potted the pink, he'd find it very difficult to get position on that awkward last red. But he needs points, so I wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't play the blue. I think Mark's had a little look at that shot as well, where he could just play off the green and leave the white over towards the brown somewhat and leave a snooker, but of course, Stephen's only going to come off the, the top cushion and roll on it. You know, try and get the green back in a more potable position, but... All in all, he's got a decision to make here. It's not straightforward. If the pink was over the pocket, he'd take that on, but it's, of course it's tight on that side cushion, so it can be missed. He's got a couple of shots. He could, he could clip off the blue if he wanted and stick it behind the yellow or move the green and leave it lined up with the brown. All a matter of personal preference for the player. Sometimes when it's like this, John, you better just have him one choice, aren't you? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, as I say, I think he needs the points, but the way the cue ball is, if he potted the blue, he couldn't get really close to the red to play a, a telling safety shot. So I think that's why he's thinking about snookers. 
But it wouldn't be a difficult one to hit, but as we always say, it's not a case of hitting him, it's whether you can get it safe. So he's going to take a chance now and bring this green into play. <laughs> never well, moved. One. Well, after all that, the one thing he didn't want to do was play a double kiss. And Green's virtually stayed where it is, so a bit of a waste of a shot, that. Oh, this red's close to the corner. But it didn't go in, but the yellow has come to Stephen's rescue in a big way. Well, I don't care how good you are, you can't be a dollop of luck because he's had one there in no uncertain terms. And this is tricky. Yeah, I think I'd be tempted to play the swerve, but on these super fine cloths, it's very difficult to swerve the ball. And coming off the side cushion immediately to the left of the cue ball might be very hard to judge the angle. So it's the swerve and it's a big one. Main thing is don't hit this too hard because it won't swerve. Oh, has he got it safe? Well, they'll settle for that. And I, so would I. Well, I can't believe he's Rock done Williams, that. Four. Because the one thing I was just about to say is don't overscrew it and go in off. One. Well, what a steal this could be. This would really hurt Stephen now. And I'm just wondering, John, whether the green that Mark Williams didn't Eight. move on the off the cushion is going to come to his rescue. Yeah, it would be ironic if it did, wouldn't it? Because he, as you say at the time, he just wasted a shot by getting the double kiss. And it's imperative off the yellow. He leaves himself a nice angle on the green so he can pop the green to get on the brown without having to use too much pace. Two key shots coming up here. Ten. Well, he's left himself a little angle. It's just a matter of whether he can bring the cue ball out. Looks easy on your screen, but I can assure you on these pockets, these are tricky. Thirteen. And he's potted it, but his position is poor. It was like as if he played it as a shot for nothing. He really got into that. We'll know before he does whether the brown's in. It's there, right in the middle of the pocket. But look where the cue ball's going to finish. 17. Not perfect on the blue by any means. And he still needs blue, pink and black. Mark Williams, 17. He may have blown the chance. Stephen needs the blue and pink. Sometimes you just can't get close to the next ball. You've just got to pop the one that's in front of you. I mean, the pink looks really simple on your screen, but let me tell you, it's just touching that cushion and they can be missed. So he needs to get up the table a little bit. Five. Now then, do you drag this and play it slow or do you punch it and drop it in? What are you going to do? There you go, you see. Stephen Hendry, five. We told you it wasn't easy. 
I must admit, I didn't expect him to miss it, though. Well, that's a very poor shot from Mark. Dear me. I think he's gifted Stephen this frame. He tried to push the pink past the black, and now he's missed it. And just this pink to go one frame in front again. Well, he's missed it again. Do you think there's tension in this frame, John? There's tension in the air. I can't believe the balls these boys are missing at the minute and the shots they're playing, I should say. Mark Williams' shot on the pink was as poor as a shot as he's played today. And I still fancy Stephen Pott in that one. Yeah, and the fact that Mark Williams has given us a lot of thought tells me that this couldn't be straighter. And with that cue ball being so close to the port cushion, the only way you can stop the in off is to raise the bus of the cue or go cushion first. And cushion first, I wouldn't fancy him potting it. Yeah, he had a look at that, John, didn't he? He came round and put his cue down, but I still prefer this one. Well, that was a terrific pot. And he's got a chance for the black to left middle or far left corner and Stephen will be really hurt if he was to lose this frame. Where would you play it John, middle or corner? Middle. And it includes properly so Mark Williams I'm certain many times during that frame thought he was going to drop a frame behind. Stephen Henry spurned so many chances. It's the Welshman now who strikes the front for the first time in the match at 6-5. Well, that was a thrill at that frame. Mark Williams has gone out of the arena for a, a deep breath of air, I think. So when he returns, so will we. Thank you. Frame 12. Mark Williams to break. It's 
So Mark Williams breaks off in frame 12. And the way this session has gone this evening, I feel it's a frame Stephen Hendry has simply got to win. Certainly should have won the last frame. Had enough chances on the pink. And you can see it hasn't been a classic scoring-wise. Mark Williams' highest break, 45. Well, at least that's better than this afternoon when it was 24, believe it or not. And Stephen Hendry's only had 69 break, which is unusual for somebody of his break-building qualities. But it's been intriguing nonetheless, John. Yes, that is the beauty of the game of snooker. If it's not won in one visit, as we used to see in nowadays in the modern game, then you know you're going to get an exciting frame, exciting match. But that doesn't make either player, and I would think, particularly at the moment, Stephen Hendry will be suffering more than Mark Williams. played three frames this evening. Mark Williams has won all three of them. But you couldn't say he's done it in style. And you couldn't say Stephen didn't, didn't have a chance in any of the three. Now then, Stephen, this is your chance. You've simply got to start scoring. He's all over the place at the minute. Signs of this in his match with Jimmy White, but he recovered near the end to play two very good frames, but... He's rocking at the moment. Well, one's rocking and one's rolling. Take nothing for granted. I think you've only got to look at the pot success of the both players in this uh, match to see what's uh, been happening. We usually say 90% or above is what's required. We're looking at 78% and now 81% for Stephen Hendry. I never thought I'd see that percentage pot-wise for probably the greatest player who ever picked up a cue. That's a bit better for Mark. Good pot. Yeah, another one required, though. Ordinarily, you'd fancy him for this blue, but some of the balls, they've been missed. Well, he potted the blue, but can on the yellow, so that's no good either. Six. Quite a clever shot from Mark, that. Mark Williams, six. Yes, he played the pot, but hoping to make sure that it at least hit the jaws with that to keep the red down this end of the table. And he's played it very well. Good cue ball, that's for sure. A bad shot from Stephen. And it wasn't that difficult a safety. I got to say that to catch the blue full in the face was 
Very poor. Yes, I think he needs the interval at the minute, Stephen Hendry, just to clear his head. Eight. Sixteen. Overhit that positional shot, Mark Williams. So this is tricky. Kewin's not particularly nice. He can't hold for the black, so probably the yellow would be the next ball, if anything. Seventeen. Well, it was certainly going to be till he got the bump in the middle hole. I know something went bump in the break there, and it? it was one of those that uh, normally a bump is advantageous. But if he hadn't have done, he'd have been nicely on the the yellow. He's he's on it now, but a little bit of work to do, particularly using the the rest. And when the yellow's respotted, it's going to make this straight red to the corner a little bit more 19. awkward than he would have liked, because the yellow is exactly where he would put his hand. <clears throat> That's great, Kieran. It really is. Straight through the centre of the ball there and into the centre of the pocket. Very good. So, cannon required here. I don't know, he just didn't seem to play that with great conviction there. He was trying to flick one out, really, as opposed to hitting them a bit harder. It looks like in the break and down behind. Well, unless he's playing the double. I think he's made his mind up, John. He's going to be positive. 28. Yes, and of course, uh, he's a great champion, is Mark Williams, and he'll have seen that there's a weakness in his opponent, and he'll try and exploit it now. And if he sees the 35. winning line, Mark Williams, he won't be worried about it. So Stephen Hendry left in his seat, probably thought he was coming back to the table. Can he get this? Well... I think it's one of those ones you want to flick a bit aside on, and we've seen that already this evening. That can be harder to do. So, if he's not 100% certain of that one, take the other red. Absolutely, I couldn't believe he was thinking of that one. There's a six. The only thing he's got to avoid is coming too straight on the black. And I'm looking at Mark's body language, a little shake of the head. I don't think he's perfect on this black by any means. Well, he's too straight. So that's all that says to us, where does the next red come from? Well, is there a red to the middle? 43. Well, he's playing another double, is he, John? Another double? Well, surely that was too much to ask. 43, Mark Williams. I've been trying to get a double up for a long time. <laughs> if you get one up a year, that'll do me. Yes, I think Mark can sense the fact that Stephen's struggling there. He really tried to be positive and force the issue. Well, Stephen's hitting it everywhere at the minute. He didn't even hit the jaws with that one. He 
Yeah, he's not having to wait too long for chances here, Mark Williams, is it? Seems every time he comes to the table, he's got some pot on. Worrying times for Stephen Hendry, I would suggest. There's a mid-session interval after this frame. He came in two frames in front this evening. It's looking likely that he's going to be two frames behind. It's a shot on for Mark if he wants to. If he chips this red in and comes around the angles and plays on the yellow, leaves himself an angle to come down and split the pack up. One. Well, it's come too far for that shot now. Well, ideally, like to have been somewhere near the blue with the cue ball. A shake of the head there. I think he tried to play that. He've had the great angle off the yellow to split the pack up. Mark Williams, one. Yes, and decided to play hard, match play snooker there, stick the green on the side cushion, insurance policy, you're 50 in front. Little tap on the table. That was a good safety shot from Stephen. Mark, we've got to be careful here. The three reds in the middle of the table look pretty easy to play safe off, but if he catches it too thick, the pink may come into play. Well, he's going down the other side of the table now, so maybe this red pots. Oh, it did. And what a great pot it was. Now, is he on a colour good? to be able to get on the reds. If he is, you fancy that could be a frame winner. Yeah. That was a great pot, wasn't it? Always, we mentioned people being very good single ball potters, that's what we mean. People who can take a shot like straight. that on and knock it straight in. Beautifully cued. And, of course, it was looking like a pretty dangerous table for Mark Williams. Stephen Hendry shot a few shots ago where he moved the green off the side cushion, put all the balls in open play, so Mark was having to be careful. And he's probably this shot away from winning a frame. If he can get this, land on the colour, he should be home and hose. But, of course, 
His queuing's a bit tricky, John, isn't it? Yeah, the old middle pocket's in the way, isn't it? Where he'd exactly like to place his hand. You've just got to get yourself comfortable. That's experience, just getting up and getting down until you can get your hand comfortably placed and get that cue running across the bridge. He knows how important this pot is. It's that bump on the middle pocket there is, is exactly on the line of his cue, so that's causing all the grief. I'm just wondering, about, is that red on the pink spot going to pot? Bottom one. Well, it looks like it will, doesn't it? He's now having a look for one in the left middle. Maybe the... Well, the one... Well, those two reds together, the right-hand side and one. Maybe he doesn't feel as though he can... It's enough of it. It's back to his original choice, but still the problem of where to put your hand. I prefer to bridge long on that rather than, you know, put my hand near the cushion rather than get the bridge hand too close to the cue ball. Just no room to manoeuvre the cue. And the time he's taking tells you how big the shot is. Frame winner if he gets it and gets position. Difficult shot this because of this queuing. I mean, you've been taking this amount of time over it. It's never ideal. Well played. Four. And really, that should be enough for Mark Williams. OK, he needs black or red, another black, and it'll be 7-5. But, well, can you Mark believe Williams, that? Four. Well, the effort he put into the red to get position on the black, and and this is what can happen. He's put that much effort in. Once he's potted that red, he's thought, oh, that's it. I'll go into the interval. I'll have a two-frame lead. I'm playing better. All them negative, oh, well, positive thoughts, but turn out to be negative ones because he forgot about the black. And for me, Whoa. this is the most important juncture of this match. If Stephen Hendry can win the frame with this visit after being basically frozen out and not playing particularly well this evening, if he can win this, he will go into the interval at 6 all, thinking he's won the pools. Well, we've seen some misses and we've seen some unbelievable shots played, but... Seven. That black beats it all, really, for me. Particularly after the great shot he played on the red and how much thought he gave it. And then he finishes up missing a straight black off the spot. It's not there for Stephen, Henry, I'm afraid. Seven. It is not there. I can't believe what I'm seeing at the minute. Totally straightforward red. Whenever you used to play Stephen Hendry what? and you threw him a lifeline like that, you always used to be on the end of a clearance. Guaranteed. Almost guaranteed it was. You were right, you know. As you say, it wasn't a difficult shot, but I think it's the shots he's missed before and the shots he missed in his first round match that have just affected his confidence. Mark Williams was sitting in his chair, shaking his head with disbelief that he'd missed the black off the spot. The funny thing is, John, when we showed that black off the spot before, you couldn't see Mark Williams in the picture, could it? He jumped up that quickly, knew and he, he knew he'd missed the black off the spot. He actually wasn't in shot. Well, when he missed it, he probably thought, like we did, that he'd thrown the frame away. Six. But Stephen couldn't take advantage of it, and Stephen won't be getting another chance in this frame, so at the start of this evening's session... Mark Williams trailed by five frames to three, but he's won all four frames of this evening's session, and he'll Ten. go into the mid-session interval. 
two frames ahead and just needing two more for a place in the quarter-final. And it's hard to say or see what Stephen Hendry can do about it from what we've seen in these first four frames. Mark Williams, 11 and a frame. So that's it. Stephen Hendry has conceded. Mark Williams' comeback absolutely complete as he hurdles the... <laughs> hurdles the chair and everything. He's got a skipping step, you could say. He's 7 5 in front. A little bit too thin, Mark Williams there. Well, good clean pot from Stephen. Straight into the centre of the pocket. I'm just wondering whether, in the interval, he's been able to clear his mind of what's gone beforehand. Pretty difficult to do, I should imagine, because he had plenty of chances in that session. Eight. Stephen Hendry, eight. And of course, this game, like all sports, I mean, he knocked in a good long red and came so straight on the black that that was the only option he had to play for that red in the middle. And this game will just keep testing yet. Stephen has missed that red to the middle. This is a good chance for Mark Williams to push on. Yes, ideal position there to play that little screw cannon, but what a good red that was. Just to start the break off. Nine. Well, does have a single red on the right hand side he could play for in the centre but may choose this option to screw into the pack again that was well played so much screw there that the cue ball 16. made contact and then arced back into the reds Seventeen. got through that one nicely, 24. although he wanted to be straight on the red to the right corner, so he may play the one to the left middle now. Twenty-five. Yes, it was a choice really, I think pink's probably the ball, simple little stunt. Just beginning to get a nice rhythm going here. Here's Mark. Thirty-two. 
Mm, that wiped its feet. Thirty-two. We 32. always say the more Bob pace Williams. you put in it, the more accurate you've got to be. Shaking his head. Well, it did jump, but as I say, with that pace, as we said earlier, I think the cue ball's already bouncing by the time it reaches the black. One. Yes, John, I think that's a shot you need to be a lot smoother on than Mark Williams. He hit that very hard. And you can see it bouncing up in the air. The cue ball's certainly off the bed of the table. And the black is there. Probably needed to be a little less pace in that and a little bit smoother. Screwed that somewhat. Six. He might just be able to get past the pink, but it's not as played. But he managed to get through to it and he's knocked it in. Seven. And you could say it would be perfect on the blue under normal circumstances, but that close to the cushion, he made a good shot. I think the red just the right of the black will go to the right middle. Well, that was as good as he's cued anything tonight. Cued that 12. really well. Yes, may choose to play a little cannon on the pink here. Leave himself on the black in the centre. That's what he's done, and of course, as long as he's not hampered there with for the cueing, little screw back, and he'd be on the outside red. Going through onto the next colour and leaving an angle to move those reds. Well, he could do it here, actually, if he wanted. Yep, just managed to flick one out 21. there. Kept position on the black. And so far, this has been well constructed from Stephen. And whilst this is not absolutely last chance saloon, he always had a feeling that if he didn't win this frame... 28. He was going to be losing the match. 29. Five points the lead. Make that now 12 points the lead. Now, if he got three reds, three blacks, which is highly unlikely, 26. particularly that one being in the ball can. He wouldn't need the awkward red against the left-hand side cushion, but... 37. It's highly likely he will, unless, as I say, that red in the ball can, he can come down and get position on the black. trying to disturb that awkward red. He didn't. He's not in good position now. 44. He's 20 points ahead, but there's still 51 remaining. A lot of snooker left in this frame. He won't be able to play on the black off this red. Nice, good recovery. Don't know whether he's got an angle on the blue to try and drop behind this red or even move it out, but 
That's what he's playing. Yeah, he played to move it. Oh, I think that's just enabled the red to go. Final flick, 50. yeah. But good queuing required for this one, John. Yes, but the advantage of it is if he knocks the red in, he'll be pushing the black towards the same pocket. But tough, but played it well. 51. Now, what sort of an angle has he got? And looking at Stephen's body language, not the best. He still needs that last red that's at the other end of the table. Can he get there? Yeah, but don't miss the black trying to do it. Well, this is a great effort. Fabulous yeah. shot. Yeah, absolutely yes. terrific. And a terrific pot it's on done. the red. So every time we keep thinking he's down and out from somewhere, he produces. OK, he got a little help there from Mark Williams, but nevertheless, they had to be taken. Yes, John, and he's shown Mark Williams that he's still in the match. It's a good contribution, this. He's found it from somewhere because, to be honest with you, in the opening 64. session this evening, he's been missing in action. A bit of an exhibition shot there on the brown. 71. He knows the frame is well and truly over, so he won't be too bothered about it. That'll please him, though, to knock in a long ball. He's not done many of those this evening. Stephen Hendry, So it didn't matter about the pink. Stephen Hendry looked to be on the brink, but he's right back in it now and just one frame behind. He's battling. Yeah, just when you think you've got Stephen Hendry, you make a mistake and he makes a frame-winning contribution. I have to say, John, I didn't see that coming from anywhere because the frames this evening, he's really been rocking. But that's why he's been the major champion that he has, back against the wall, very similar to the match with Jimmy White, of course, where he was 8-7 behind, produced two great frames of snooker. And that was another... Very important contribution there because, honestly, if he'd have gone 8-5 behind, for me, it'd have been all over by the shouting. Yes, yeah, you wouldn't have been able to see a way back. Mark, of course, trying to pot the black and bring other reds into play. This was the one. We were saying just before he played the black that the red only just struggled in, and I think that was one of the main reasons he didn't get as good an angle on the black as he required. If he'd have left more of an angle, he wouldn't have had to play it with that kind of pace. This game's all about fractions, and the fractions, Mark Williams got it wrong. Frame 14. Mark Williams to break. So Mark Williams breaks off in frame 14. And in the context of this match, this is a huge frame. clean One. pot and signs Stephen Hendry is starting to fancy this straight into the centre of pocket as well that one four problem here for Stephen is the 
the black is not available, but I think the pink may be to the left middle. Six. And that's what he's played on. Let's see if we can just stun this through a little. Well, he's decided to drop it in and play the red in the other corner pocket, which is fine. Well, I say it's, you say it's fine, yeah. Jim, but if the pink doesn't go on its spot and it goes at the bottom of the cluster, will this red still be able to pot? Well, surely he wouldn't have made that mistake. Well, I'm looking at Stephen's body language. Twelve. Must still go. Well, he's played. He's played for the red next to the black. Twelve. Ah. Stephen Hendry. That was a strange red to play for, wasn't it? Really. Well, he obviously thought that if he potted this and played the cannon, he was knocking the black towards the other corner, and he was right. He just didn't knock the red in. in this evening, Stephen. It, he, he makes a break like he did in the last frame and you think he's back to playing something like his best and then a little bit of lapse in concentration as you miss something you wouldn't fancy him missing. It's a, a full box of chocolates at the moment with Stephen Hendry. You don't know what you're going to get. He read to go for, and he got it too thick. So here's a chance for Stephen, as long as he can get an angle on a colour to try and bring those reds into play. Oh, and he tried to do it off the red and took his eye off the pot. I think he played the right shot, John. He just played it badly. I could see that straight away. That was in his eye. He was going to do. With the black being where it was, he thought if I play this and split the pack up, I'd be unlucky not to be on a colour. Forgot to pot the ball. Well, it's unbelievable some of the pots that are being missed. Yes, at the moment with Stephen, it looks like every ounce of his concentration has got to go into a break that he's making. And as soon as he's not giving it 100%, he's missing balls. Yeah, fair Five. comment. There's no easy uh, shot for Stephen at the moment. He can't take his eye off the, Six. the ball for a second because that's the only reason you can assume that he's missed those. I mean, if you said to him, here's a thousand pound, pot that red in the middle, he wouldn't miss it. But as soon as he starts thinking about other things, then he just takes his eye and his concentration. Well, Mark Williams has played a... Eight. A lot further down the table than he intended, and if he's on this red into the green pocket, he can consider himself quite fortunate because he didn't play on it. Nine. Well, it just about wobbled its way in. Yes, red in the centre is available. 16. 17. And this is a nice chance for Mark Williams. Pot the blue, of course, it go back up on its own spot. And it's got the two reds on the right hand side just below and the one in the middle of the table. So this is a pretty good chance. And when he moves. The bottom one of those two reds on the right, the one at the back of the pack will go as well, so he should score some points here. 
23. Yes, I think it's one of those situations. He doesn't have to do a lot of disturbing. Those two reds that you mentioned will go to the the middle. There's even one to the left corner, but I think the one to the middle will be favourite. 30. Going up for the blue. As long as he gets the right side of the blue, he'll be 31. in good position. He's just about got there. But it's one of these matches you take nothing for granted. You're just waiting for the next mistake, aren't you? 36. I mean, normally you'd think, well, you'd fancy Mark Williams to win the frame at this visit, but... 37. From what's gone on before, I wouldn't be certain. Well, I think he can screw back and play on the loose red. I was just looking to see if those two reds above were a plant in the centre as well, but... Now yeah, doesn't have to take any of those now because the bottom one goes, although he's a little short with the cue ball. 44. So important that he gets this one right. Very cleverly 45. played that with a little bit of side there. If he'd have just played that plain ball, he wouldn't have been on the blue there, but he played it with a little bit of run inside. And sent it up the table. Well controlled. 50. 51. Not played that well. He didn't want to be using the rest. He's got a 39 point lead. This black, another red, and a, a colour. But it's there, and that was a good, good recovery. 58. So there you see it 46 ahead, 59 remaining. Red and a black took a 54 in front, with only 51 59. left. Still can't quite believe Stephen missed that red in the centre, John. Really was a bad miss, wasn't it? Had a good chance there, popped that, split the pack up, and of course he's had to sit in his chair and stew over this. So that should mean the end of this frame 66. in favour of Mark Williams. And this will put him one frame away from a place in the quarter-final. Well, Mark Williams, will 66. Stephen play on? He may do, but he'll need a snooker. He's 54 points behind with only 51 remaining. Mark Williams should be one frame away from the quarter-final. Sixteen. Now it looked like Stephen had decided to <coughs> pop the last red and take the black there, but hasn't really got the ideal angle unless he pots this and goes across the table twice. Yeah, if he if he plays for the blue, he'll need two snookers, so he needs to be on the black here. Seventeen. the black he keeps it down to just one snooker required and he didn't oh he did he did well what a stroke of luck that was Mark Williams can't believe it 24 it looked as though Stephen was ready to concede until this black somehow find it found its way into the middle pocket so still one snooker needed 
Stephen Hendry, 24. Could that be the turning point, John? There's been too many of them tonight, John. Oh, what a pot. Two. What a pot. OK, it was made the easier because the yellow finished tight against the cushion. So, 32 points in front, just 25 left on the table. Two snookers Stephen Hendry requires. Surely he'll play on. Mark Williams, two. That's the best way to stop your opponent getting a snooker. Snooker him. And Stephen's got to hit this. And he's got to try and get it safe. Yes, he can just hit an edge of the, the green. Well, he could. Where's the cue ball going? Mark just had a look at the, the score there. Two snookers required. Where's that cue ball going? Too close to the pocket for comfort, but not in. There's a little smile up there. John, to you in the commentary box. Yeah, he's shaking his head towards me to say, what have I done there? <laughs> Certainly not the easiest position for the balls here to get two snookers. Obviously, the black is the one you can try and play behind a little bit, but... In this instance, John, you'd like to have a couple of colours close to each other, wouldn't you? Yeah, I suppose with the pink there, it's a little bit of a buffer, but if you were thinking, oh, compiling a list of people who'd want two snookers to win a frame, I don't think Stephen Hendry would be in the top 20, really, would he? Because he's not used to it. He's usually, you know, that, far, yeah, yeah. He's usually that far clear, never needed snookers. Yeah. I think that could be the end of this frame. It will be. The one thing you've got to do if you want to keep trying this for the snookers is get the object ball safe. And he failed to do that. And he won't Great. come back to the table now. So, Mark Williams, we can surely say now, is one frame away from a place Seven. in the quarter final. Mark Williams, seven, and a frame. And that's it. So, Mark Williams, who started this evening, two frames behind, once again goes two frames in front, but this time just one away from victory. Well, you said, John, we've had a bit of all sorts, and I think that's what we've had, because every now and then you just think, and I agree with you, that Stephen's going to hit a bit of form. And then the next frame is like a completely different player. I think he's, um, his reserves of concentration aren't quite what they used to be. I think that's one of the things as you get older playing this game. You, you don't quite concentrate as well as you used to. And I think it's taken all his effort and powers of concentration to make a, a decent break in this match. And then all of a sudden when he's in the next frame, as you say, he goes and misses a, a silly ball. And... I don't know, he just doesn't seem to be able to maintain that level of concentration he used to have. Because not only was he one of the best break builders and the most talented players, his level of concentration used to be outstanding. Well, yes, I mean, anyone who just, he's just reel off break after break after break, I mean, and that obviously is a sign of a great concentration. There's a lot of scars mentally, of course, and I think it, even Stephen now uh, will sort of look at any shot and think he can miss it, whereas before, I mean, if he was anywhere on a ball or a black off its spot, he wouldn't dream of missing it, but now you're not too sure, and I think neither is he. Yes, that's the worst part, John, for yourself, isn't it? Not knowing when it's coming. Frame 15, 
Stephen Hendry to break. a long way away and I think this red may go into the right corner I think there may be a gap for it and there was <laughs> pretty short of pace for the blue anyway I don't know whether the green can be the second prize Oh, well, that's unlucky. One, Mark Williams. Four, Stephen Hendry. Played the trickier green. Took a ch took a chance with the cannon. You can't really legislate for that. Have a little shot that Mark attempted. Played a little plant there, might have got the pot. If he didn't, there was safety involved. Well, that's not the best safety shot from Steen. I suppose the only thing from Mark's point of view, if he plays the pot, it would just be careering into the pink and the red, so he might turn it down. Probably be wishing he had it done now. Yeah, he sort of got played that a bit wishy washy, really, didn't he? Neither went out full blooded for it, and I think it was a type of shot you had to be make your mind up 100% about. Well, that's not well, this black doesn't get any easier. This is a tough shot, but we know, and we've said it before, when he's backed against the wall, Stephen, he just thinks attack. But this is tough. Well, that was a terrific pot. That really was under the utmost pressure. And he's had his reward. He's on the red to the middle. Nine. out better he's got the red 16. to the right corner but he just got a little bit too much pace in that cue ball and being close to the cushion as he is he needs a good pot and not only a good pot he needs to control the cue ball 
Well, he maybe feels he can just roll it in. I'm not certain he can and get position. Well, he could. And um, that was another terrific shot from Stephen. Yes, and if you can play a little screw cannon here. Up into the reds. Could play dividends, played it that way, had a choice of playing a couple of little cannons there. Could have played two reds that were next to the Four. pink, could have played in there as well. Well, this is fine. And the other day in the match with Jimmy White, when he was 8-7 behind, he produced two excellent frames of snooker from nowhere. Tonight he's got to produce three. Can he do it? Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Forty. A mm, little bit twixt in between. He's not ideal on this green. Nobody cued that nicely. Well, I say that, I'm not certain whether this red passes the pink. If it doesn't, 40. he's not inch perfect by any means. And it doesn't. This red a bit more difficult. Yes, John. Of course, with the blue and pink being where they are, he could only uh, play on a ball colour there, so having to do a lot more work with the cue ball at the moment. There you see it, 52 ahead, 75 remaining, 49. red colour red required. Well, you saw Stephen look away Stephen in Henry, absolute 49. disgust. I mean, he's just hit that full in the face. It was a... He just hit it straight. It's amazing. You can only put that down to hitting across the cue ball and not delivering the cue in a straight line. You look to have the frame sewn up. Well, I don't expect Mark Williams to win the frame at this visit, but just the fact that those misses right. of Stephen just seem to affect him and affect him for the rest of the frame. And he had a great chance there to win the frame. Will he get a better one? I say that, this is a tricky red he's got to take on here. Twelve. And because it was tricky, he sort of underhit it slightly, so he's going to play the cannon now. Just a join between the red and the pink, he should be on the red. Well, if you hit the pink and it finishes like that, that's even better. I said there was no way I thought he could win the frame from this visit. 
I'm not sure now. Yes, I suppose Stephen Hendry will be looking at the red that's on the right-hand side cushion because, of course, Mark Williams is left-handed, so he's going to have to use the rest or move it out from the cushion if he wants to get that one. Well, he's decided to play for this red and he's just had a slight angle, but whether he'd want to be playing for the black, well, he is doing. Got to be so accurate with this. And he was. 28. And he's got the bounce off the top cushion. What a clearance this could be. Well, this is definitely for me. The frame ball shot. If he can knock this in, John, he's got a fabulous 55. chance of winning this match. Yeah, if it isn't tight against the cushion, though, it's tricky and it's not tight. It's not tight. That's and that's five. why it didn't go Mark in. Williams. So Stephen Hendry has had a let off and he comes to the table 17 points in front. Take nothing for granted, though. Well, if that's not the worst shot he's played in this match, it's high up there because that is absolutely awful. Anything he's got, he's got five colours he can play on up there, and to finish there is terrible. Well, Mark Williams comes to the table, the age-old problem. Hit the yellow, can he get it safe? Can he pot it? Where's the cue ball going? Two. Well, would you believe it, but Stevens only himself to blame. He can't be not bemoan his bad luck, in all honesty. Luckily, because he's sick. had ample opportunities, and that last positional shot, as you say, John, probably one of his worst in the match. And, OK, Mark Williams was just hitting an open on the yellow. And now, Stephen, there you go. And it went right in the heart of the pocket. So, Stephen, with the problem that Mark Williams had, but this could be to stay in the match. It's a free ball, this, I ball think. This. Mark Williams, four. Is it a free ball or is it not? I don't think it is. No, it's not. If it had been a free ball, he'd have taken the pink. Well, surely he's called a miss, hasn't he? Didn't call a miss, did he know? Well, I mean, did the referee not call a miss? And if he if he did, why didn't he take it? So close. Well, it's over the hole, all right. There's not a problem potting this, but the position can be very awkward off these. Can't always guarantee you're going to get plum on the brown. Yes, and he needs up to and including the black. Oh, and he's played it beautifully. Three. He could not have played it. You explained the difficulty, John, but he could not have played it better. Four colours between him and the quarter final. Seven. Just come a little short, hasn't he? So he'll have to leave the pink up into the yellow pocket. Stephen has already undone his cue sitting in the chair. He thinks it's all over. Well, after what's gone on, I wouldn't be too sure. Twelve. And he's run through, so he's going to have to use the rest here. And this is a pinpoint positional shot he's got to play. It's not just a case of screw back, you're bound to be on the black. It's not guaranteed you're bound to be on the black. 18. <laughs> and Stephen is putting his cue back together. Mark 
Mark Williams. 18. So, a black ball game. Can Stephen Hendry keep his hopes alive? And good luck with this one, by the way. This is horrible. Very difficult to get this safe. Played the double kiss safety, and to be honest with you, it couldn't have been played much better than that. This black will pot, but it's no gimme. Oh, much too thin, and he's left it for Stephen. Now then, Stephen. Q through the middle of the white. Well, that's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, you would never, ever have seen Stephen Hendry miss a frame ball like that. That's how important it was, the frame ball. He used to gobble them up. And now Mark Williams once again for the match. Missed it, but it's run safe. Now, I don't know how Stephen's feeling here. It wouldn't surprise me if he played a cross double here. <laughs> it really wouldn't. He should just push this onto the top cushion. Push it up there on that ball cushion. It wouldn't surprise me if he played the cross double. Well, he's got a good white, John, I think. That's the one thing of it. The only reason I thought maybe cross double because he's, he must be so annoyed the opportunities he's missed in this frame alone. Stephen missed those opportunities, but it won't matter. Stephen Hendry's the one who has to go back to Scotland. Mark Williams, a leap of faith as he gets into the quarter-final and beats Stephen Hendry by nine frames to six. Well, that's it for this evening, and boy, have we had some thrilling matches. Mistakes galore, but... Doesn't it make it exciting? Stephen Hendry very disappointed. We'll be back on this table tomorrow, 1.30 start time. Look forward to seeing you then. Good night.